Bogdanovich. And that will do it. And a huge sigh of relief. You see this? This is what a losing team looks like. But not just the losing team of this particular game, but a team that has lost more consecutive games than any team ever has. In every single season, in the history of pro sports in North America. The Pistons are really bad, but they're not just bad relative to this season. They're not even just bad for an NBA team. They are possibly the worst North American pro sports team ever. During 28 straight loss, ties the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With football season upon us and basketball in full swing, save yourself the time and hassle of looking for good tickets and killer deals with SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. And with over 70,000 events happening every single day on SeatGeek, they've got anything and everything you're looking for. I've been using SeatGeek for years to find the best deals on my Trailblazers tickets. It's fast, it's easy, and watching them lose far too many games is a whole lot easier knowing I got a great deal. On the SeatGeek app, you can check the status of each available ticket for any game. And with their rating system, you can quickly see which tickets are a good deal, the green ones, and which tickets are a bad deal, the red ones. SeatGeek is safe, it's easy, and it's a guaranteed way to get the best deals for your tickets. And right now, SeatGeek is offering $20 off your first purchase when using promo code Jimmy. I've left a link to download the SeatGeek app in the description below. Just head over, use code Jimmy, and get $20 off your first purchase. How bad does a team need to be in order to be the worst team? Like, ever. In North America, professional sports have been around for over a century, starting with the National League of Professional Baseball Clubs in 1876, followed by the American League of Professional Baseball in 1901, forming the MLB in 1903. 14 years later, the National Hockey League was established in 1917, and then came the NFL, formerly known as the American Professional Football Association, three years later in 1920. The fourth and final major sport didn't come about until 1946, when the Basketball Association of America was founded, known today as the NBA. And over the last 148 years, these four leagues have expanded and grown to now include 124 teams across two countries. 124 teams, nearly 150 years of history, thousands of individual team seasons. And yet throughout all of this, one team has to inevitably be the worst one. And that team is playing right now in Detroit. What the Pistons have managed to do so far this season isn't just bad. Their incompetence is a statistical anomaly. At the moment, the Pistons are on a 28 game losing streak. 28 games, 28 losses in a row. Now, y'all remember the Cleveland Browns back in 2016 and 2017? Just how bad they were? Well, they lost 17 games in a row across two seasons. They were horrendous for two full seasons, but their losing streak is only the 62nd longest in North American pro sports history. To find this year's Pistons, you have to take a nosedive through 150 years of sports, some of the worst teams imaginable, then keep going, and then go some more until you've reached rock bottom, with the second longest losing streak in pro sports. The only team that strung together more consecutive losses were the mid-1940s Chicago Cardinals of the NFL, who spent four seasons just losing a whole bunch of games in a row. To put some perspective on just how bad the Pistons are, the San Jose Sharks are the worst team in the NHL this season. In fact, they're on pace to being one of the worst teams in recent history, and they have a win percentage of 27.2%. The Pistons would need to go on a nine-game winning streak starting with their next game just to catch up to how bad the Sharks have been this season. But it gets even worse. The Panthers have been the worst team in the NFL this season, winning just two of their 15 games. Their win percentage is just 13.3%, which means right now the Pistons are relatively half as good as the worst team in the National Football League. But my friends, it gets even worse. Because over in the MLB, there's one clear front runner as the worst team in the league, and that is the Oakland A's. 
The A's played so bad last season that it literally cost the city of Oakland their baseball team. And still, the A's finished the 2023 season with a winning percentage of 30.9% and a record of 50 and 112. If you scale their season down to 82 games, that's equivalent to an NBA team winning about 25 games in a season. From the time this season started, the Pistons are on pace to winning 25 games, oh, sometime around mid-season, in 2028. The Pistons are a horrifically bad team. In fact, they are so bad that comparing them to other teams this year, even across other sports, there is still clearly no competition for who the worst team is. In order to do that, we have to pull out the record books. Here are the 10 worst teams in NBA history according to win percentage. Now, it makes sense to use win percentage here over actual number of wins because every season does not have the same amount of games. For example, the Providence Steamrollers won just six games back in the Stone Age, but they only played 48 games the entire season. And then of course, there are the 2012 Bobcats, who won just seven games in a 66 game shortened season. I vividly remember this Bobcats team. They were so bad that the discourse around them that season wasn't about if they were just the worst team in the NBA. It was about if the Kentucky men's basketball team, a college team, could beat them in a game. This team was disgusting. And yet, somehow, the 2024 Pistons are losing more games than that Bobcats team did. Even in a shortened 66-game season, the Bobcats managed to win seven games. This season, with a full 82-game schedule, the Pistons are on pace to winning just five, which would essentially make them about twice as bad as the next worst team in NBA history. If we compare the Pistons to the worst teams in MLB history, they are still, by a massive margin, worse than any team that has ever played in Major League Baseball's 148-year history. The last time a team in Major League Baseball was even remotely close to as bad as this year's Pistons, the league sounded more like a branch of government than it did a professional sports league. The Colonels, the Nationals, the Senators, the Cowboys go back nearly 150 years and still you will not find a team as bad as this year's Pistons. But the worst team in MLB history according to team record were the Cleveland Spiders. Yes, this was a real team. And no, they were not as bad as this year's Pistons. Going 20 and 134 on the season, the Spiders had the worst winning percentage in league history of just 13%, which means they were still winning twice as often as Detroit is this season. Detroit's record at the moment would be the equivalent to an MLB team winning just 10 games in an entire 162 game season. But what about the NHL? Nearly 100 years of history, there's gotta be one team that just couldn't win games, right? No. In 1975, the Washington Capitals were one of two teams added to the league in an expansion year. The team was literally built from scratch sort of a Frankenstein of a roster, loaded with free agents, young prospects, players who had never even played a minute of professional hockey in their careers, bits and pieces from other teams. By no means was this team expected to win many games. And they didn't. The Capitals finished the season with the worst record in NHL history, winning just eight games. But back then, NHL games could end in a tie, essentially giving half wins in those scenarios. So those eight wins got the Capitals to a win percentage of 13.1%, very similar to the worst teams throughout NBA and NFL history, which makes the Pistons still far worse than the worst team in NHL history, a team that was playing in its first season with new players, new ownership, and virtually no expectations. But that leaves us with the NFL. And as many of you know, there have been a handful of winless teams throughout the league's history. And five potential wins is still better than zero wins, right? Wrong. I believe that a team on pace to winning five or six games in an 82-game NBA season is still worse than most, if not all, zero-win teams in NFL history. 
For example, take the most recent zero-win team in the NFL, the 2017 Browns, one of the eight winless teams throughout the NFL's history. In that 2017 season, despite winning zero games, the Browns had an average point differential of negative 11 points, meaning on average, they lost every single game that season by 11. Which sounds bad, because it is. And yet that still only ranks as the 109th worst team point differential in league history. They were losing, but they were still competing compared to some other bad teams throughout the NFL's history. In fact, there have been teams who were losing games on average by twice as much as the zero win Browns. But at least those teams still managed to win a game or two. The Pistons, on the other hand, oddly enough, have a similar average point differential of negative 11.53, which is the fifth worst point differential in the history of the NBA. So they're not only losing damn near every game, they aren't even competing. And the four teams that were losing by more than the Pistons still managed to win double digit games, or at least were nearly on pace to in a full season. The Pistons aren't just losing games. They are getting blown out in nearly every game. So now that we know, at least at this moment, the Pistons are worse than any NBA team ever, they're worse than any MLB team ever, they are worse than every NHL team that has ever taken the ice, and they're probably worse, if not as bad, as the worst NFL teams ever, I think it's safe to say that at the pace they're on, they could potentially finish this season as the worst major pro sports team North America has ever seen. So how exactly can a team be this bad? How does this happen? Well, first, this is a very young team, the third youngest team in the NBA with an average age of just 23 years old. The majority of their minutes going to these young guys with hardly any NBA experience and no real opportunity or guidance to learn the ropes before being thrown into the lion's den every game. And part of this is for reason number two, which is injuries. With two of their oldest players and their two highest paid players, Bojan Bogdanovic and Joe Harris, missing the majority of the season so far due to injuries. The lack of veteran leadership in this locker room and on the court has seemed to have made a real negative impact on this team's morale and their ability to fight through adversity. Most of these young guys have never been in a situation where they need to lead or even carry a bad team to victories. This takes time to learn, and right now nearly every player on this roster is learning this all simultaneously. Whether they are even capable is a whole nother topic. This is why Alec Burks, a career role player, can oftentimes be found with the ball in his hands late in these games. He's a 12-year NBA vet who has logged enough minutes to at least have some idea of how to navigate close, competitive games. This team also can't close out any games. Even the worst teams can usually squeeze out some tough wins just by sheer luck, if nothing else. The Pistons have found themselves in clutch situations 14 times this season. That's games within five points with five minutes or less remaining in the fourth quarter. And in those clutch moments, the Pistons have shot by far a league low of 23.3% from the field while scoring 4.2 points less than half of the league average. This has led them to win just one of their 14 relatively winnable games. If they are just not horrific in the final minutes of these games, they win at least a few of these matchups. And it may sound like an oversimplification, but the Pistons just can't score or defend. Of the 11 players on their roster attempting at least one three-pointer a game, just three of them are shooting at a league average percentage and one of those three players is their starting center. The other eight players have a combined three-point percentage of just 29.2%, essentially making them one of, if not the worst shooting team since the three ball really took off a decade ago. Add that to the fact that this team is abysmal defensively, allowing over 120 points per game while only scoring 109 points per game, and you have a recipe for disaster. They have no depth outside of Cade Cunningham and a downhill Jaden Ivey. They don't have anyone who can create their own shot. And to add fuel to the fire, they are leading the league in turnovers and fouls committed. So they can't even hold on to the ball and they're giving up more free points to their opponents than any other team in the league. So they're not just bad at every aspect of the game. They are virtually the worst at every aspect of the game. 
And what makes this situation worse, if that's even possible, is that most bad teams throughout NBA history, and even recent sports history, are losing almost on purpose in an effort to tank. And you know when a team is tanking, not spending any money, loading up on picks, dumping off assets to make room for a rebuild, the Pistons are this bad, and they're actually trying to win. They hired Monty Williams this past offseason with, at the time, the highest salary of any coach in NBA history. They have five top 10 picks over the last four seasons on their roster in Asar Thompson, Jaden Ivey, number one overall pick in Kate Cunningham, Killian Hayes, and James Wiseman. This team is trying to win. They just can't. On his podcast last week, Bill Simmons made a great point about the whole situation that really put into perspective just how bad and even how unlucky this team has been so far this season. With the parity in the modern NBA and the depth and the three-point variance that can create double-digit point swings in just a matter of seconds, losing 28 games in a row is almost like flipping a coin 28 times and it landing on heads 28 times in a row. The Pistons struggles this season aren't just bad, they're bordering statistical improbability at this point. It is truly fascinating to see. But this is exactly why, if they keep this up for the remainder of the season, the 2023-2024 Pistons won't just become the worst NBA team of all time, they will be the worst professional sports team in North American history.